Hello, today we're going to talk about validating HTML. So this is something that might be new to you, even if you've been creating web pages for a while. And if you're just starting out creating web pages, this is going to be a valuable tool. So I'm looking at a web browser right now because the HTML validator that I'm going to show you is web based. And so I'm going to begin by heading up to the address bar and the address of this service is validator.w3.org. I'm using a little autocomplete here. My right arm's in a sling, so I'm not typing anything I don't have to type. And so you'll visit a site that looks something like this. There are several ways to get your code validated. I tend to do the direct input. Notice you got different tabs here. So you can link to it, you can upload the file, or you can just paste it straight in there. I'm gonna use that tool. The idea is that you put your HTML in, in this little text area right here and you'll get some feedback. So that's where the tool is. I'll show you how to interpret it and how to use it. So I'm going to pull up some code like this. This is this is valid HTML. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all. I'm going to copy it. I'm using keyboard shortcuts. So I, I selected all that stuff and then I'm going to head back to that validator and I'm going to paste it right here. Right, there's that code. And so how this works, now the interesting thing about HTML is you could write really, really inaccurate HTML and the page might look just fine. So whether you've done it correct or not, oftentimes you've got errors in your HTML. And like I said, they might be a big deal, they might not be a big deal. But regardless of whether you see them as errors, they should be fixed. So I'm gonna press check and hopefully you get something like that, the little green thing down there. No errors, no warning. That means that what I've done is syntactically correct. Now, like I said, it's a lot of people don't validate their HTML. And right, if you create a page and it looks fine, and it behaves fine, then it's probably pretty good. But you just never know what how mistakes are going to affect people who use different browsers. And sometimes you might have a simple HTML mistake which wreaks havoc with a with a script like some JavaScript. So understanding how to use this tool and what it does is really important. Let me show you some things here. So let's say that I did something silly like I uh, I misspelled title, right? I just deleted the E from title. And if I check that, I'll show you what an error looks like. And so this is kind of helpful. So it says on line five, something about, it says something about a title and it kind of highlights it. So when I uh, work through these, I just kind of look at the first error. So there's something on line five. It looks like it's related to that tag. If you can figure it out, then fix it. And I check and they all go away. I want to show you that again, just kind of pointing out, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let me check that one more time. So I, I made the mistake again. Now notice that one mistake ends up throwing seven errors, kind of, sort of. And that makes sense because having a, a mistake early on in the document can kind of throw up a whole bunch of other red flags later on. So do understand that I think you should fix these things one at a time. You also might notice that I'm fixing my text right here in line. I don't think that's a great idea. The reason I don't like that is, let's say you had a mistake and you fixed it. Well, that doesn't fix anything with the original file. So personally, I like to I like to go figure out where the first error is, go back to my raw file, make the changes, and then recheck it, right? To recheck, recheck, recheck until you can get it working correctly. The interesting thing about HTML is that you can have egregious errors, such as like no closing HTML tag or no closing body tag, and the page might render just fine, but it doesn't mean that it's syntactically valid. And you just never know how those errors are gonna manifest. So you should really do everything in your power to not have errors in your HTML, right? Just eyeballing the page and looking at how it turns out really is not a sufficient uh, test. So at the point where you finish your page, uh, you should validate it and clean up all the mistakes. Or if in the development process, things really just aren't going the way you expect they're going, there's a good chance that you have some mistakes and you can use a tool like this to eliminate those mistakes. Right, so this is at validator.w3.org. Thanks for watching.